Yo, people always ask me, how do you get the energy to move, right? So today I'm going to show you, how does your body obtain the energy it needs for movement? We get our energy from the food that we eat. If you don't eat for a while, you're going to be tired. For example, how does Kingsley's body turn his lunch into power for biking? The bonds between these elements contain energy. Our body breaks down these bonds in a process called respiration and to use this energy to power our bodies. Our bodies primarily use glucose as energy in this process. Our bodies undergo multiple processes that extract the energy from glucose, which include glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. All right, so the first step is glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cell cytosol, which is outside of any organ else. Energy is added to the glucose in the form of ATP, which then splits the molecule into two pyruvate molecules. When oxygen is present, the cell then initiates the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria. The citric acid cycle takes electrons off pyruvate, the end product of glycolysis. That forms chemical energy. The citric acid cycle also releases carbon dioxide, which then exits the cell. When electrons arrive at the electron transport chain, they go through a series of reactions in the membrane of the mitochondria. These reactions produce the energy to run ATP synthase, a transmembrane protein complex, which produces ATP. ATP is the currency of energy like dollars are for money. ATP is able to store energy, which organisms can then use at a later time. Phosphates do not like to be next to each other, so cramming three on one molecule stores a lot of energy. This is the summary of aerobic respiration. Notice that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol outside the mitochondria, and the citric acid cycle and electron transport chain occur inside the mitochondria. The outputs of each process are listed here. Notice that for the electron transport chain, oxygen goes in, it combines with electrons to form water. The ATP made from these processes helps Kingsley power his body. But what happens when you're working out and you're breathing super hard and you just can't get enough oxygen? Now, if we don't have oxygen present, don't worry, our bodies have a plan for this. Instead, we use anaerobic respiration. So here we have the same process, glycolysis, glucose, into pyruvate via ATP. Now, the difference is, instead of pyruvate going into the citric acid cycle, we make lactic acid, and that accounts for the burning you feel when you work out. Thanks, Jordan. This process is inefficient, but it is necessary for survival. When your muscles need just a little bit more energy to exert, anaerobic respiration is perfect. Oh wow, that's interesting how the food I eat gets broken down into energy that I can use to power my body. Back to biking. In this video, we will be discussing aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Now let's talk about glycolysis. This occurs in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And we're gonna be talking about the breakdown of sugar, primarily glucose. What do you need for glycolysis? One glucose and two ATP. Well, glucose is a very stable molecule. And in order to destabilize it, you need to phosphorylate it. And those phosphates come from ATP. Now when you phosphorylate glucose, you get Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which critically breaks down into two G3P glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates, which are then broken down into two pyruvate molecules. So you end up with your outputs as four ATP, two of them are net, because remember, the bonds in glucose store a lot of energy, so when you break them down, you release that energy. You also get energy in the form of reduced electron carriers, two NADH, and like I said, two pyruvate molecules. The citric acid cycle involves the constant oxidation of, of many intermediates. However, the main goal is to reduce NAD and FAD into NADH and FADH2 to provide electrons for oxidative phosphorylation. Here we have the main electron transport molecule in humans. The NAD transfers electrons from one place to the other by being reduced. Being reduced means you accept an electron. So in the process of reduction, NAD plus becomes NADH. Later on, NADH can give that electron to another molecule and then become NAD once again. This cycle 
allows these two molecules to be interchanged and just transfer energy from one place to another in the form of an electron. NADH and FADH2 come from the citric acid cycle and release their electrons which move down the electron transport chain. As they do this, protons are pumped against the gradient and across the membrane where they accumulate in the intermembrane space. As the electrons move down the ETC, they reunite with oxygen gas and H plus where they produce water. We reap the benefits over here, producing roughly 36 ATP per glucose. How do your cells generate ATP without oxygen? That's a process called anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration takes the pyruvate generated from glycolysis and turns it into lactate using lactate dehydrogenase. This process generates ATP. But what do you do with all that lactate you just built up? The glucose is going into your muscle. It's converted to pyruvate through the process of glycolysis, which generates two ATP. This pyruvate is then turned into lactate through anaerobic respiration. This lactate then goes into the liver, which is converted into pyruvate. And then the pyruvate is turned into glucose at a cost of six ATP. Notice you generate two ATP, but it costs six ATP. That's an expensive process, right?